Hey, what's going on? Morn back. And we did our PV, PVE tier list earlier, and now we're going to do our PVP tier list. This, the way I'm going to rate them stays the same, and you'll notice throughout this a lot of heroes remain the same. But that's all right, because in these kinds of games, good heroes are good heroes, and that just is kind of how it works out for the most part. There, some heroes will change up or down a couple places, but nobody really falls in like plummets. The bad ones are the bad ones, the good ones are the good ones. So let's jump into the first hero. First hero is Margaret. Margaret is a special, special PvP hero. She just, she just needs to not get one shot. That alone will RNG you to victory, even when you should not be able to win. Um, you could have the far superior team, far superior gear, but Margaret getting those dots and just through speed manipulation alone, she can end your team. It is, it is terrifying to face Margaret. The next hero is Meryl. We all knew Meryl was going to be good. Um, we just didn't know how good she was going to be. And then we found out at IOS server one, the speed wars are in full effect and Meryl Sarah combo is out of control. I and mean, we've got people that are just re-rolling great, amazing gear just to put speed because that Meryl goes first, followed by Sarah going, silencing everyone. It's just a game ender. There have been people who found ways to, to kind of counteract it, but that doesn't change the fact of that Meryl's still an SS tier hero and as is the next one, Sarah. These three heroes are SS tier because as soon as 10 star, they can start to have immediate impact even against other teams that are full A5. Last week we were doing the free team up arena and a member of Greed was attacking us and my team and they were winning because he had an A2 Mero with more speed and a nice control rate to Sarah. This combo is just insane. It can lock everything down. And I'll cover more on compositions in another video. Hopefully tomorrow I want to put out a PvP comp video because I have a couple others also. Moving on, the next hero that's going to be next here, yes, she gets to move up. That's Marcia. Marcia's speed reduction can change the outcome of a battle. It is incredibly strong. The, the amount of speed she steals just makes it very difficult to counteract. It can be the difference between your Matthew going before something or your Sarah going before something you know, instead of them dying. That happened to me today. The next one is Michelle. Michelle is one of those just good all-rounded heroes. She can purge debuffs, uh, purify, I think they call it. And then if she dies, she can res your team, which is kind of useful right now in this Meryl Sarah meta that Meryl can potentially one-shot many heroes. Next is August. August falls a little bit in this because he, he the, the, the heroes in S tier for PvP are still super good and you can really, you could use a full team of S tier. You're going to have an amazing team. The problem is they do not compare to those top, to the three SS tier heroes. They're just controlling the meta right now. And the only person that I know that has a good team that doesn't use Sarah Primarily, I'm um, sorry, there's two, and it's Tangle and Alars from Empire. Um, but I, even with them not using them, I, they've had to stat roll for some pretty particular pieces to counter this, this set of heroes, which can hurt them in the long run when they have other heroes. Next hero is Sylvia. Red for Berea up there because if Sylvia's S here, so is Berea. They are amazing. Only Sylvia is slightly better in PvP than Maria right now because Sylvia hits all, all targets and that really helps with Sarah's capacity. Maria, however, I have seen firsthand from a member of Free to Play over on Android where there's no rational reason that he should have won the battle, but Maria just took over, got the round three, and they could not kill him. He was just indestructible. It was ridiculous watching Margaret Stacks and everything else just go on him. Nothing, nothing being able to stop him. It was pretty amazing. 
Alex. Alex gets a boost in PV in PvP. And I did that because I was looking at some battles today, some battle playbacks, and Alex actually does really well in PvP, especially in the current meta. He doesn't Margaret is going to put her stacks on anyway, but he really plays a fundamental part in keeping the rest of your team alive. So that Meryl Sarah combo just doesn't destroy you right off the start. The next S tier hero is going to be Morgana. Morgana and her word soup abilities are phenomenal. She can do massive damage to Sarah because I'm sorry to more um, Meryl because she has a passive called Forbidden, Forbidden Retaliation. Fortunately, control rate doesn't affect it, but it is a very good skill. And then she hits all targets disables passives when she actives which if you if i'm still working to figure out how to make her a little more go first and not be silenced by sarah in round one if that's the case you can shut the other team down i have i have tested the, the team comp with her in it and when it goes off there is nothing the other team can do and i literally nothing. moving on to a tier math if Matthew is necessary in the current Rainbow Meta PvP teams in an IO Server 1, however, he's only necessary because he's a little bit of healing right now. And he and he can die and get this. He's not an S tier hero because if you get left with, say, just Matthew and Sylvia on, on the composition, and the other team has three heroes and Matthew is not one of them, you're probably going to and that's just, he's a healer. That's all he does. He doesn't do anything additional but heal. Next is Musashi. Musashi is a very good hero in PvP. And he is slightly better than Genji in PvP. Because he hits all targets and then he puts bleed on them. Everybody knows that plays this game. Dot in this game is king. He doesn't move up to A tier in my opinion. Or to S tier in my opinion. Because he still doesn't do that much more damage than Genji, despite the fact that he hits all, he has the bleed on all targets, and he, he Meryl is just too good right now. And the Rainbow Aura is important because it gives that plus crit percentage, which potentially lets Meryl one shot Margaret. Which, if that happens, that shuts the other team down, even if they still get a Meryl to go off. Then there's Genji. Genji can resist. CC effects, potentially Sarah's, and when he does, he counter it, and that's a very good ability. The problem is, it doesn't happen nearly often enough, and there's no stat to really increase increase that. Then there is Cassandra. Cassandra still remains at top. She's all she's a well-rounded hero. She does a little bit of everything, and she actually, for a priest, does more damage than other. Priests. That, and that's something to put note on. And the fact that she can energy feed your team while with a little bit of healing and a little bit of like buffs to your heroes. She is a well-rounded hero. Next is Erica. Erica's entire skill set is based on PvP. If she if she kills an enemy, she drains energy. Energy. If she if she dies, she resurrects. It's awesome. She is. She is very good when it comes to PvP. However, she just is not better than any of the heroes above her at this time. And maybe once we get artifacts further along, she will be. But I'm not counting on it because I don't think the speed meta with, with Meryl, Sarah, is going to go anywhere anytime soon. I just think it's going to evolve, which may later include her. But I think later it will end up including Berea over Sarah. Or I'm sorry, over Sylvia. Next is Lee. Lee is the furry little fella is an A tier in PvP too because he has an on death passive that completely purifies all CC. Oh, not I'm sorry, all debuff. That means he removes all Margaret stat. I lost the battle in free team arena because of a lucky purify. Otherwise, I would have won the battle when when it rotated back to Sylvia. She would have died. Instead, I lost because my stacks of Margaret got, didn't get purged, but 
the enemies did. Then we have Chen. Once again, CC. I cannot stress how good Disarm actually is as an ability in this game. It gets overlooked because of silence, but they will. But if you have the silence and the Disarm going back and forth, the enemy will just never get to attack. The composition that I use, the reason Chen remains at A tier is because Morgana also does Disarm, and it's a higher chance to do it. Um, the combo with Sarah and Morgana, I've had teams completely locked up, unable to do anything because they're either disarmed, stunned, or silenced. And it's a, it's a really nice combo. Next is Vesa. Vesa is an A hero because when she starts, she actually provides a really hefty shield. And it could be the difference between winning and losing in the current meta. And I'm going, and I'll be able to test more. But in general, she deals she deals damage, and then she heals the lowest the lowest person based on the amount of damage that she was she dealt, um, which is or to the number of enemies she deals damage to. Vesa is a well-rounded hero, and she just has a chance to dispel buffs, which could be good against teams that are running August Alex because she can just get rid of like the link and the armor boost. Then there's Jacob. Yes, the, the terrible, terrible dark hero Jacob is actually very good in PvP, and I have felt this one firsthand as I watched a Jacob kill one hero, and then he went back and countered attacked, and on the counter attack he killed another hero, and he was just, just getting all kinds of energy. Jacob can be a viable hero. He just, once again, he's not going to deal the damage as Musashi or Genji. He doesn't have a, a good a skill set as the heroes above him. Then there's Omar. I cannot stress, as I mentioned in PvE, how good Omar actually is. I haven't got a chance to take him high enough because I haven't gotten that many copies of him. But when I do use him, I find that his healing is amazing. The only issue that I have right now is I don't need him because Matthew full heals everybody. However, he definitely will let you heal over time, which makes a big difference in the game. Moving on to B tier. There are quite a few B tier heroes. Dharma. I'm sure there is a composition where you can manipulate Saruman, where Saruman might actually be OP. His ability to, to get energy when other heroes active and to provide an automatic critical hit, a 100% chance for crit is is very good. It's just going to take time to manipulate and see how that works out. And it's difficult right now because, this, once again, the speed wars, if you're not doing speed war, you're running the old school PvP meta, which is still viable. I do look for in the future Saruman to be moved up to A, maybe even S, once we figure out how to use his ability better. Next is Aris and Cynthia. Aris and Cynthia basically do the same thing. They tangle. CC. The problem is that they're not as good Is it's just generally a low chance, a low CC chance. That makes them just not as good as other CC heroes. Cynthia may become more viable in the near future as opposed to Matthew in the Rainbow meta or a meta because she provides a shield first turn out. But... She has to attack first. That's an issue, and that's why Bessa is superior and Cynthia is on the B e tier. Because Merrills are too fast right now. I believe the fastest Merrill on our server is 339 speed. Yeah, that's very fast. Then a shout out to Ray, your girl Irene. Irene is actually not bad. She's just, as usual, squishy. She can put in some serious damage and she can melt enemies because she has such a high crit chance. The problem is getting her to live long enough to do that. Then there's Cassius. Full disclosure again, I have not been able to properly test Cassius, but I feel that B tier is an appropriate place to put him without proper testing because all the other heroes above him on my list are all like A4. I think maybe I have an 
they're all like A4. Omar is the lowest one besides Cassius. And because of Omar's skill set, he's not a damage dealer. He just he doesn't need to be as high of an ascension to be more effective than Cassius. But I do look for Cassius to go high because his ability to deal damage and then additional damage if their hit points are high is kind of one of the things that make Meryl good also. Melissa and Karthix. They are about equal within the PvP meta. Um, I actually think Melissa is a little bit better because I think the dot has more staying power than Karthix's ramp over time because I'm pretty sure I have matches aren't timing out. They're going like two to three rounds. And that's game. You know who's going to win before it even or even reaches round two at this point. Next is Alistair and Cilia. They are two very good heroes, and they do okay in PV PvP, but they don't do enough to really shake the meta. They are really kind of filler heroes, and maybe even maybe could be dropped to down down a tier. But I feel B is appropriate because they can actually do a lot of damage. Anything that steals attack could potentially be devastating in the game. And that's what Alistair and Cilia both do. Next is Natalie. Natalie is actually not a bad hero. Uh, Tengul uses Natalie to a very good effect. As long as you can get your team to live, that extra 10% attack can be very good long term. Um, the next, the next three heroes are the the wolf pups. If you don't have their their little thing, I made it for the last video, and I'll add them in as this one goes. But they're not really PvP heroes. Oliver and Lucas have the most transition to PvP. I feel. Um, Ryder maybe if they buff Punk, but Ryder and Lucas, Lucas can really save your lowest hit point hero. But the issue is if you're going to run Lucas, Lucas is more difficult to obtain, and you have both August and Alex at your disposal, and they're easily attainable. Why, why would you run a hero that does something similar that's inferior? I don't know. Um, Oliver, I know for certain that he's he has dot. And I also know for 100% certainty, it does not mitigate enough. Not even close. So there's no point to really run him. But he is not bad. He does what he needs to do. He just doesn't do it well enough. Especially when everybody's now at this point pretty much A5 Mar Margaret with like 18 to I think I've seen 22,000 uh, attack power. That is a lot of burn when they're getting like 2 to 3 stacks per, per turn. Moving on to C tier, we're just going to go ahead and throw these heroes all up here. Bade could possibly be good. However, Bade isn't so great because he energy feeds and he, he's not going to have time to energy feed in the current PvP meta. He's just not. Um, so that really puts him at a disadvantage. And then there's Barton. Well, Barton is more of a mirror hero, an early game hero. His burn is nice, and he actually has a little bit of sustain. But he needs to active, like most of these heroes, the active is what makes them. Uh, there are a few that the active doesn't make them, and they're all rated higher than Barton, i.e. Morgana. Um, doesn't need to active. Marcia doesn't need to active. Genji doesn't need to active to be able to do good work neither does cynthia barton does same with harold harold's nice because she hits all targets but she's just weak dot and it is actually very weak dot and then there's adela i i was all on her hype train i have i could provide screenshots showing me g money and all other players in empire talking about and within the world chat how good she was going to be after the rework and she just is not. Her stun percent is nice. 50% stun is, I think, the highest natural stun rate in the game. However, she has to active to do it, and then she has to live. She's just not very good. 
And then next is Mallory. Mallory has a CC and Tangle, but it's a low chance. It's lower than Cynthia, it's lower than Aris. So she gets knocked down, and I believe it's only back row, so the potential of two enemies. Nobody's putting any money heroes in the back row. They're all supplemental heroes. So you're not tangling, entangling Margaret. You're not entangling Meryl. You're getting like Matthew, who's on the brink of death to begin with. Then we have Eris. Eris gets a little bit of buff from PvE here because he has a freeze chance in his block ramp. But if you're gonna run Eris, you just might as well run Sylvia or Berea because they're similar in style and the other two do far more damage and they are far more sustained. Then we have these guys. Once again, as in as in PvE, if the if you're a light and dark hero, you already have high expectations and your only ability is to survive and not die, you're probably not going to be very good and thus Herc and Olaf get rated so low. And I'm not the only one that has tested this. Um, there's a couple other hero, or a couple other members of Empire that have tested this and we were talking and we're like, hey, you know, I'm really disappointed with Herc, Herc and Olaf. They don't do much. And We'd be like, hey, this guy said this also. This player said this also. And it's not that we're saying it because I really, really wanted Herc to work, especially against boss. He just doesn't. He doesn't work in PvP either. His, his passive is literally meant to counter Michelle. And Michelle, though a top-tier hero, um, an S-tier hero, she's currently not heavy in the meta. So you have a dead ability, a dead skill. It's completely unnecessary. And then we will move on to Matilda. Matilda is not bad. She has a little sustain and a little bit of CC, but the problem is she doesn't have enough CC and one target CC is not going to get the job done, especially not PVP, especially being a mage, just how, how it rolls. Jacob, I'm sorry, Carl. Carl is not bad, but he's just outclassed in damage and abilities at all, every step of the way. He does have a nice ability when he falls below 30%, and I think it can activate every three rounds that he heals, but it's just not enough. I mean, I mean he may get that activated one time, but he's not even going to heal before the, the, deal, the death blow is dealt from the ridiculous amounts of Mar Mar I'm sorry, Margaret stacked after a Meryl act. It's just not going to happen. Then Henna. She hits the lowest target, so she can really kind of like snipe your mages, snipe mages, which is a good ability. But as anyone knows with DH games, um, using idle heroes, that lowest target hit is not very viable in PvP. It, it, it's always like people make meme teams about it, but it just never really comes to any kind of real fruition. It's just it's not good. It doesn't work here. Her ability to silence is nice, but you're silencing one target. So you don't kill Margaret, you silence her. Margaret doesn't have to deal, doesn't have to attack. She just needs to take some damage. That's it. And and if it's just not a viable hero. Next, we're going to move down to D tier. Carlina. Carlina hits all targets, but she only really removes attack. She doesn't remove much attack. There's other heroes that do it better. And she is just really kind of one of the worst heroes within the Ocean Faction. She's good early. She'll help you push through easy. But but in PvP, she has no use. Um, these D-tier heroes, I, you know, I would not use them. I may even take one of the raccoons or whatever the little squirrely the guys like over them. And I'm not kidding. They're very bad. In fact, I think Amanda heals or Ormus does. And so that's better. Moose spell. Once again, he has a chance to burn. A chance to burn. He would move up far on both lists if he just automatically did burn him. But he doesn't. Only a chance. And his taunt on is a garbage ability in the game. Nicole. 
if you run Nicole, you're just asking to lose in PvP. And she's too detrimental to herself. She doesn't bring anything to the team. It's just, just not a good choice. Same with Richard and Bella. They're, they're just not very good. Now, Richard is actually good in here. I mean, he still doesn't get upgraded for being good in Mirror. Uh, G Money actually has a nice Mirror video out, and I really highly suggest people check that out. It's pretty good, it's pretty accurate. And Bella, once again, if, you were, if your ability to remove energy is your best ability, you need to make sure that, that it removes enough energy to have impact. I mean, she's hitting them and dealing, giving them the same energy she's removing. Just useless. And Dora, another terrible hero. I mean, she's, she's like targeted toward Chaos Faction heroes, which would be good against Margaret. But Margaret's probably going to have her dead before she does anything anyway. Then we'll put these two in there. Yet again, as in PvE, I just can't find a use for them. Their abilities take too long to actually do anything. Um, I think uh, I think Glendon's is three rounds, and Malcolm's is like no Glendon's until he acted again, and Malcolm's is like three rounds. PV, PvP battles don't last three rounds, so they're useless. So by the time they do it, it's like round five before their their battles their things matter. I mean, maybe there's a meme team with like Kirk, Olaf, two two chubby dudes, and and it's good, like it can outlast to around 15 or something. But in the current meta, no. Then there's this guy. Uh, he's awful. Like, he's just not He's not good. And I said it in the first video. And I'm going to say it in this video. He's terrible. I beg you, DH Games, rework Riser. He is very bad. He doesn't scale in this game at all. There's no use for him in any point in this game it is crazy that he is that he is even an epic hero yeah an epic hero he should be at best an elite and even then i think with his skill set that's pushing him. anyway here's my second pvp oh my kids are home and they're going to start screaming like crazy people this is my second tier list for the day my pvp tier list tomorrow i want to get into different compositions on what to do and for PvP, and I want to do a um, video on a guide for the new Dreamland. Uh, I haven't even opened it yet, so it'll be a first time we'll do it together. Let me know in the comments if you would actually like me to stream it live, and I might do that, and we'll like schedule time Monday or Tuesday to do it. If I don't get any anything back from it by tomorrow, I'll just do a video of it and publish a guide in general. Uh, anyway, thank you. Enjoy my content. Please like and share, and have a great day.